Welcome to today's uh, Bible study. Um, we are doing Proverbs 3, um, one of the most famous Proverbs, and y'all will see what I mean uh, as I read the scripture, and um, some of it is very familiar to, to you. It says, My son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will br brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord's discipline those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yield better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and her paths are peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By knowledge the watery depths were divided, and the clouds let grew drop. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve some judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster, or of the ruin that overtake the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side, and will keep your foot from being sneered. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, Come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you, when you already have it with you. Do not plot against your neighbor, who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason, when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord curse is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. As I mentioned, this is one of the most famous psalms in many ways. A uh, couple of the verses we all know, um, by, by heart anyway. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Uh, we live in a strange world at, at strange times. As we keep hearing on the news, um, now not only are there coronavirus, uh, riots, but a lot of statues have been torn down throughout America. Um, some of them have little or, or no excuse for them to be torn down. Um, we also see a political system in great upheaval. For example, uh, in New York, there is this poor person um, election where a lot of people that are politicians are being replaced by people who have little or no experience or just throwing their name in the hat last second to upset an incumbent. Um, as I say, we do live in some interesting times, um, but at the same time, I, as a Christian, and you as a Christian, should realize 
that ultimately God is still in charge and that we should trust in him during these times. As a matter of fact, Jesus pointed out to his disciples, don't be afraid when you hear rumors of war and earthquakes and problems and all these things. These things happen. That's just the way life is. And so as a lot of these things happen, some people react and run in fear um, like Chicken Little and uh, say, oh my God, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Um, but as we read through Psalms, we are reminded again and again that uh, if we trust in God and do God's will and do things God's way, not only will God bless us, but he promised several things to us. And I don't want this to go to the point of health and wealth gospel that if you are a Christian, all your problems will be solved and uh, you'll be healthy, you'll be wealthy, and you'll be wise. Um, because as we talked about last week, um, Solomon advice to his son, to this person in reality, to, to all of us, is to trust in God and that is the beginning of wisdom and that we should seek wisdom as if we are searching for precious gold or silver and rubies. And in this um, very psalm, we see that he repeats that idea again, that um, blessed are those, verse 13, who, who find wisdom, who, who's gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yield better returns than gold. In other words, uh, what you look for and what you go after is what makes your life. And that wisdom is more valuable than money, gold, silver, or anything else. But let's start over at the verse again. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. And, and this is the Old Testament way of saying um, far too often... Um, Kids grow up, and uh, during their rebellious stage, they, they rebel against their family, and they go hang out with their friends, and they do what their friends say. Um, and as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, a lot of people give in to peer pressure and uh, forget what their parents or their church have taught them. And um, so Solomon's first advice to all of us is don't forget the teachings, and don't forget that those things were given as commands in your heart. Um, that, and the heart here is not that organ that pumps the blood, but that emotional center of you, your subconscious mind, to really rely upon that. Because if you rely upon God's ways and God's teaching, listen to the promise, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. And I can tell you, that this is indeed a promise that we see over and over again in the Bible, that if we do things God's way, we are blessed with longer life, first. Second, we're blessed with peace during our life, and we're blessed with prosperity. Some people take that to the extreme and said, if you're a Christian, um, it's the health and wealth gospel. But that's not what the scripture is saying. It says, if you trust in God, you will prolong your life. Let's be realistic. People who are not doing the right thing in the right way for the right reason and are out there uh, committing crime, um, setting traps for other people, um, rioting, etc. What's the likelihood of them dying? As I mentioned, I served in the federal prison for many years. And uh, many of the inmates who were in there point out the, to the fact that, yes, they were drug dealers and they were drug lords and they did things. Um, in the gangs, and the, in reality, their life expectancy was very short. And the fact that they were in prison gave them some extra life. Unfortunately, I saw some that went out, they went back to the gang and to the street, and within a year or two, they were dead. The reality is, as Christians, because we don't involve ourselves in those type of activities, because we trust God, and we will follow what we will see, some of the things that um, Solomon is saying about how you treat your neighbor and how you treat other people with dignity and respect, that your life is indeed prolonged. For example, the people that are shooting each other, be it in Chicago or Los Angeles or the riot in New York cities or wherever you may find it, those people, their lifestyle leads to death and destruction and problems, and they don't realize it that 
they are the cause of their own problem, first by not trusting in God and second by the behavior they engage in. And so Solomon's advice to us is to trust these teachings of God, to write them in your heart, and they will first and foremost prolong your life. And I can tell you as a Christian, you live a longer life at peace with others. And that's what it says, and bring peace to you. The reality is, as I have told a lot of inmates over the years, that being a, a Christian does indeed make you more prosperous and wealthier, especially in my case. And, and they looked at me and said, what do you mean, chaplain? Or what do you mean, pastor? And here, here is the thing that we need to understand. God does indeed bless us with longer life once we start following his ways, A, because we don't engage in activities that endanger ourselves. We don't put ourselves in places uh, and situations that would endanger our lives. And second is because we do change our lifestyle, uh, we do have more money. And I gave them this example, and I use myself as a Hispanic male. Um, traditionally, a Hispanic male in the past would have a wife, several kids, um, and they would also have what they call a, a girlfriend or a, you know, a, a, a woman on the side. And the way they handled their life and money was the man would go out and work and he would make, say he make $1,000, he came home and gave the wife three, $400 um, for her to do whatever she needs. And then he would take a couple other hundreds and drink and smoke and gamble. And then he'd take a couple more and uh, in, in a sense have a second family with this other woman. And the fact that they become Christians mean that they no longer engage in that lifestyle. For example, they have one wife with their kids, as in my case, and all their money and energy and time goes into that one family. And so to start with, they have more money. And the, the more money means they can dress better, eat better, um, give more. And so that's what Solomon is talking about is if you follow and do things the right way and the right, for the right reason uh, and follow God's will, not only is your life longer, but you will be at peace and you will have more money, more wealth, more prosperity. He goes on in verse 3 and said, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. So what we need to see is that uh, doing God's way and living a Christian life, as Jesus said, they will know you by your what? Love. And so love and faithfulness is markers of what we're talking about. It's not just, oh, I'm a Christian, so God's going to bless me with health, wealth, and prosperity. But by living a lifestyle, by living a lifestyle of peace and um, family and all those Christian values and virtues, or as the New Testament want to put it, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, etc. By living that lifestyle, you do indeed have a longer life. You have a more peaceful life and you have a more prosperous life. Does that mean that everybody is going to be a millionaire and all the problems going to disappear? Of course not. But I can tell you that being a Christian is indeed the best life. The best life. As a matter of fact, Solomon goes on in verse 4 and he says, Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And so what we're saying is a Christian lifestyle is the best lifestyle not only do you get in right relationship with God, but you also get in right relationship with your fellow man. So there's a vertical relationship, you and God. If you get that relationship right, your horizontal relationship, your relationship between your friends, your neighbors, and all of all other humanity, because it's based on love and um, forgiveness and acceptance and trust and faith and those, those things, then you do indeed live a life that's longer that's more peaceful and more prosperous. And people look at you different. They no longer, um, and, and, and that's the case that I can tell you. I've seen hundreds, literally hundreds of inmates over the years. As they changed their lifestyle, they were treated different. They, they won favor in the sight of God and man. And so that's where that verse come in. It says, trust in the Lord in, with all your heart. And so what we need to understand is that being a Christian is a 100% commitment, 100% of believing and trusting in God. And that's what Solomon is saying, with all your heart, not just partway commitment, but 100% commitment to God. 
And, it's, and he goes on and said, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, in everything, in, in your work life, in your home life, in your church life. Or as I used to tell the inmates, we as Christians live one life, one life. You don't have a, a lifestyle that you do. You act one way at church. You act one way at the, the, the food service area. You act one way at the, in the dorm. You have one life and you always live that Christian life. And the same can be said for us as Christians. If we're at work, if we're at home, if we're at church, no matter who we're with, if we, if all the time our heart is trusting in God and not leaning on our own understanding, and in all of our ways we submit to Him, then He will make our paths straight. And so that's what um, Solomon's famous advice, he said, he goes on and said, Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. In other words, as Christians... We always put God first and we put evil. We do the right thing in the right way for the right reason. And it says, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to the bones. And I can tell you, I am healthier. I'm, I'm financially better off because I am a Christian. And that's one of the promises. If you do things God's way, you are indeed healthier and happier and wiser. And Solomon continues, and give us some practical advice now. He said, honor the Lord with your wealth. Now that you have accumulated things, honor the Lord. And, and, the, and the Old Testament way of doing this was the first fruit of all your crops. In other words, we give to God first. And then, and, and I, I want to pause here for a moment. And I know this is, you know, I, I, I don't like to preach about giving at all. As a matter of fact. I avoid that subject, but this is a Bible study, and, and I need to address that issue um, for us. As Christians, if we truly trust in God 100%, we should always give to God first, because God should always be first in our life, no matter where we find ourselves. So, for, for the uh, Old Testament, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. With the first fruit of your cops, then your barn will be filled to overflow, and your vats and and this is where that health and wealth gospel get it wrong. They say, give to God first, and then God's going to bless you or overflow. No, that's not what it means. Is Here's the thing, uh, and you, you might want to look up this guy, Sir John Templeton. He started Templeton Investment Funds and such. And he was famous back in the, the Great Depression. He was a young man at that time. And he, he said this, that tithing is the best way to invest. Tithing is the best way to invest. And what he means by that, he always tithed, uh, and he became Sir John Templeton. Um, they, they gave him a knighthood. Um, and here's the reason why. During the Depression, he bought up all the stocks he could that were a dollar or less and held them. And as we know what happened, his view was whenever people are out there panicking like they're that like it was happening earlier this year with the stock market and stuff and people were selling 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 and the stock market was crashing he went out and bought all the stuff low because everybody know buy low sell high unfortunately because of people's fear and greed and stuff a lot of people buy high and sell low and when the market is going down they jump out of it and but, but here here's sir john templeton's advice is do it God's way. Give to God first because tithing teach you discipline. And he used the example. If you have $100 and you give 10 to God, that means you only have 90 and you have to budget within that 90. And so tithing teach you discipline of budgeting. And he said that that is the main reason is to learn the discipline of giving to God first, then discipline yourself. So and, and he was a very disciplined man, and he became one of the first billionaires. So, honor the Lord with your wealth. And he said, and, and speaking of discipline, that's the next word. Verse 11, it says, My son, do not despise the Lord disciplines, and do not resent his rebuke. Unfortunately, when we get on this topic of tithing or giving to the church, a lot of people said, Pastor, it's none of your business, or, you know, Yes, it's none of my business. But here's the thing. Giving to the church is not between you and me. It's between you and God. And uh, I like what um, one of my mentors, uh, one of the persons who I read and study, um, John Maxwell said, one of his 
parishioners came into him and was going to withdraw the money that they were giving because he did not like. And so he looked at him and said, so you're going to rob from God. And here's the thing, giving, I'm not going to tell you all how much to give, etc. What I am telling you is the practice of disciplining yourself to give to God first and then what you have left over, manage your household affairs. What that means rent, uh, food, clothing, vehicles, etc. Just that discipline will make you better. As a matter of fact, Solomon advises, do not despise the Lord's discipline because the Lord disciplined those he loved. And here's the thing. The most important thing we can do as Christians is to develop the self discipline the self-discipline of disciplining ourselves financially mentally spiritually physically in reality a lot of people don't understand the word discipline at all discipline is not what some people would, would think of as corporal punishment or in the military where they force you to do things that's not discipline that's corporal punishment discipline and I'm going to give you all a definition for um, discipline that I have uh, discipline is to do what you say you will do when you say you'll do it. Or here's another defi definition, to do what you say you will do, to give yourself a command and to follow it. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize that discipline is necessary for us. As Christians, we should live very disciplined lives following God. As, and we see that Solomon's advice to us is that God disciplined those he loved just as a father the son delights in. And then he goes on and talks about wisdom and how we should really seek wisdom more and more and more. Because as I started out, the, the promise is if we seek wisdom, if we seek God's way, verse 16 said, Long life is her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. And again, we're not talking health and wealth, um, social gospel, but in reality, if you do things God's way, you are indeed blessed with longer life, and you are indeed blessed with more finance. At least I can tell you, I can testify to you, my life has been so much better once I became a Christian. Uh, I avoided so many problems, financial problems, physical problems, emotional problems, and the list goes on and on. And it all is because of seeking to do things God's way. And it said, and, and God's blessing to us is long life is her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. And so Solomon used this idea that of a tree giving shade. And as I look out on my lawn, I could tell where there's shade because the grass is greener. And growing well especially as the Sun gets hotter and when where there's no trees and it's not being watered it dries up and so that's what Solomon's um, example is that she's a tree of life that takes hold if, of those who take a hold of her those who hold fast to her will be blessed and so doing things God's way is indeed a blessing a great blessing to all of us and so he goes on and explained that in reality, God created the universe. He said, by wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. In other words, as we look around creation, um, we, we, we see that uh, creation created by God was created perfectly and such. Um, so Solomon advice to, to us, picking up in verse 21, it said, my son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. And I think that's one of the things that's so lacking during these days. Um, as I mentioned to y'all, y'all will probably never see me out there rioting. You'll never see me protesting. You'll never see me pulling down uh, statues and all those things because they're worthless. They're, they're useless. We should use sound judgment and discretion and seek to live peaceful, long lives and do things God's way rather than doing all these crazy things that we see. Um, Solomon continues, They will be life for you. If you seek wisdom, you seek discretion, you do things 
um, God's way. As I, 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 I know that's why I picked up on this whole idea of Proverbs a few weeks ago. As we are living the, during these chaotic times where people are rioting, people are um, protesting, where people are pulling down statues, where people are, you know, on and on doing crazy things. They have lost their sense of dignity and respect for themselves and for others. And so, um, you know, if you don't involve yourself with those things, yes, you will have a long life and yes, you will have peace and yes, you will have prosperity. Um, he goes on and said, then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. And so if you don't engage in those bad behaviors, as I mentioned to the inmates, that's who I dealt with for those 26 years. If you don't engage in bad behaviors of stealing and selling drugs and all those things, of course you will live a more peaceful life, a more happy life. Um, it just, God's ways is just so much sense. It says, it goes on and says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. And one of the things I learned from inmates, and it, it, they would say every time a cop car went by their house, they would be peeking out their window thinking that maybe they're going to come and stop for me. They were constantly afraid of being caught when they were doing wrong. And the thing about it is I, I see a cop car grow by my house and I don't think anything about it. I don't think they're looking for me because I'm at peace. I did not break any laws. I did not hurt anybody. I, and so, you know, cop car going by, oh, they must be going to help somebody or somebody must be, you know, who, whatever. But I'm not afraid of the police officers. And um, unfortunately, we are in a situation where people are, are calling for police departments to be abolished and on and on and on. But as a Christian, we have no fear of the police officers for we're not doing anything wrong. And so we can lie down in peace and not be afraid. And when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. I know at night, every night I go to bed, my wife says I hit the bed and less than five minutes later, I'm out cold. The reality is... I turn it all over to God and my sleep is indeed sweet. I mean, that's, it's lights out for me. It said, furthermore, have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtake the wicked. I don't worry about a lot of things. And the reason is, is if I turn it over to God, I don't worry about a lot of things. Um, you know, like I said, the inmates would be um, pulling back their curtain and peeking out to see not only were they afraid of other people doing bad things to them, they were afraid of police officers. And, uh, you know, to live a life like that is, is just unreal. He gives some further practical advice, picking up in verse 27, dealing with um, people. He says, do not withhold goods from those to whom it is due when you have it in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you. Pay your bills on time is what he's saying. If you owe somebody something, pay them. Uh, unfortunately, people who are robbers and thieves, you know, don't do that stuff. They withhold things. It says, um, do not plot harm against your neighbors who live trustfully. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. In other words, as a Christian, we should live a Christian life doing the right thing in the right way for the right reason at the right time. And the right time is always now. And so he goes on and said, as a matter of fact, his advice to us is, do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. As Christians, we follow God's way and do what is right and seek God's will and not follow the world's way. Um, and I, I know that many of you who are on this and are listening to this are doing exactly what I'm telling you. Um, Y'all aren't out there doing all these crazy things. Um, is there a problem in our country with racism? Of course there's a problem. Is there a problem with uh, a, a lot of things? Of course there is. But the question is, do we use wisdom and prudence to solve these problems peacefully? Do we uh, you know, do these things with wisdom and discretion? Or do we go out and do crazy things? And for me, I can tell you, um, as a Christian, I seek to do things God's way and and. God's way is so much better because here's what verse 32 said. For the Lord detests, the Lord hates the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. And so if you're doing things God's way and doing things, God loves you. But whenever you sin and whenever people are out there, and that's what I see is happening in our country today with the riots, with the protests, with the pulling down of statues, with all these things, is people 
are not doing things the right way. They are doing taking matters in their ho own hand. And um, if you if you seek and do God's will, then things will be blessed. And and that promise is going back to verse two. If you keep and do things God's way, it will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. And the thing is, it's not saying that, oh, if you believe in Christ and you're a Christian, you're going to be healthy and wealthy. But in reality, you will be healthier and wealthier because of doing things God's way. And I hope and pray that we can understand that. That as Christians, we always do things God's ways. We always seek God's ways. We, we you know, um, if we do things, you know, His ways, if we seek His path, He would... And, Trust in the Lord in all our ways. Um, then he will indeed bless us. Uh, are there any questions concerning this Proverbs? I know our 30 minutes is up again. Um, and um, we keep harping on this team. But in reality, I want to end with this. Doing things God's way in a Christian life is indeed the best life there is. Because God bless us with longer life, with peace, and with prosperity. Amen.